devotional reading is from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they, st that they strive not about words to no profit, but to be subverting of the hearers, to the subverting of the hearers, I'm sorry. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Amen. We'll have our, our lesson reading at this time. Thank you, Jesus. Open in our hearts and minds to all that God has in store for us this day. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Our lesson is age does not matter. Our focus verse Focus thought is we must encourage and believe in young people who desire to do the work of God. Our focus verse is 1 Timothy 4 and 12, and it's included in our lesson text, which is Acts 15, 36 through 40, 1 Timothy 4, 12 through 14, and 2 Timothy 4 and 11. So we'll just read the lesson text together, please. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from and went not with them to the word. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Let no man despise the youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the land on of the hands of the prisoners. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thankful to God for this day that's before us. Amen. A beautiful morning that he gave us. Amen. I was certainly surprised when I woke up this morning and saw snow all over the place. <laughs> uh, not like I hadn't seen it before, but uh, it was still, it was beautiful out today. Uh, God's beauty, even in storms and such, is just amazing to me the, how he forms things and how he makes things and, and the beauty that God can bring forth. Uh, out of just the simplest of things. Our lesson today is entitled, Age Is Not Matter, speaking of those that uh, serve God. And it started out with uh, a dispute that Paul and Barnabas had uh, over a person named John Mark, who had been on a missionary journey with them. But uh, sometime during that journey, he decided to go back, uh, back to his home, I, I would assume. It doesn't really say but he turned back from helping them with the work. And so now this time when they're gonna go again and visit some of the cities that they had already preached the gospel to, uh, now we don't know whether Mark was a uh, young person or if he was an older person or middle-aged or what he was, uh, but, the, the, but the fact that he went back showed that he might have been young in the gospel. Uh, and who knows what the reason was, God does. And so now this time, when they, they were going to go on another missionary journey, and Barnabas, who I, I, I love to, to think about Barnabas. I teach a Bible class on Barnabas because uh, he's called the son of consolation, but he is an encourager. Barnabas is one of those that looks for the best in every single person, I believe, uh, and that he had a, a super good heart. And now, even though Mark had failed them the first time, 
Now Barnabas wants to take Mark with them this time, but Paul uh, didn't think, you know, that he wanted him with him since he deserted him once already, uh, that he maybe thought in the back of his mind that they might desert him again. Uh, and so he didn't want him, but Barnabas was determined to give Mark a second chance uh, and to allow him to join them in this missionary journey and going back to all the places that they had already been and to see how the brethren in those places were doing, uh, to see if the churches were growing, to see if the, the gospel was being preached, to make sure that the things that they taught them were still being taught and that the people were being obedient to those things. And so there arose a, a great uh, uh, confrontation between Saul or Paul and Barnabas. Uh, just because they were saved didn't mean they weren't going to have differences of opinion. Uh, and so uh, they finally decided that, well, we're just going to have to split ways for right now. So even though Paul and Barnabas had been together, now they're going to split ways and Paul's going to take Silas, Barnabas is going to take John Mark. Uh, and they're going to go their separate ways and they're going to continue to preach the gospel and teach the gospel. Uh, Barnabas, again, being one of those that looked for the best in people and looked for the good things, not, not the bad things. He's always willing to, to help out. You know, he had a, a good attitude. Now, Barnabas was one of those that after the day of Pentecost, uh, he was one of those that had land and he sold it. And he, he brought the money and he laid it at the apostles' feet, uh, as well as others that did that, trusting the apostles to distribute to the, to the saints as the, that had need uh, as they saw fit. And so he had a trusting heart. And again, he had a good heart. So now they're going to depart and they're going to go their separate ways. And, uh, but again, we see that they will come back together again. And we see that, as we've seen in our last verse of our lesson today, that now as Paul is writing to Timothy uh, and he is telling him now, he says, uh, he says that only Luke is with him. He said, take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Something that he must have heard or something that he saw or something that he had uh, been told that now Mark had turned out to be uh, a solid person in the gospel. Of course, we get the gospel of Mark. Uh, and so uh, now we see that uh, he's, he's going to ask him to come along because he's profitable. Now, before he wasn't profitable, now he is profitable. Uh, reminded me of the story of Onesimus, the, the slave, uh, that was not profitable, but then he was profitable because he got saved under Paul's uh, teachings. And so in our lesson contains talks about Timothy. Paul writes to Timothy to encourage him. Um, Timothy was a young man that uh, got saved under Paul during his, one of his missionary journeys. And Paul had, I believe, left him in Ephesus to uh, be in charge of the churches there, uh, or the church there, churches, however it was. Uh, and so uh, he was a young man, and Paul had to write to him and encourage him to not let people despise him just because he was young. The Bible tells us that, that Jesus, uh, uh, when we're thinking about children or young people, uh, he, Jesus told his disciples uh, when they were, some were going to bring children to him and he rebuked them, his disciples rebuked those that brought them. And it says, but when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not, shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. So uh, we have to receive the kingdom of God as a child. We're all children of God, amen? Uh, and some of us, of course, uh, some are older in the gospel, some are younger in the gospel. And the thing is, is that age doesn't matter. Age is not a factor. We seem to think about age, you know, with age should come wisdom, with age should come experience so that you should be able to do better and better. But that's not always the case. We have some uh, super talented young people uh, and people can be saved at any age. We've seen people, uh, you know, saved at a very young age. We've seen people saved at a very old age and everything in between. 
So when it comes to the gospel, when it comes to the message, when it comes to receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, age doesn't matter. In fact, I think young people receive it easier than older people because they, they have a tendency to believe, you know, the things that are taught. And young people are, are important uh, in, the, in the church. Uh, when we think about uh, youth, uh, I, my first thought when I, when I thought about this, the scriptures today, my, my mind went back to the book of Proverbs and talking about, and that's written as a father to his children, to his sons, to his children, uh, and even uh, daughters were included there when it talks about in that last chapter about the, what it takes to be a, a good woman of God. But when you look at the book of Proverbs, uh, the phrase, my son, is throughout. Uh, and so it's the father, Solomon, instructing his children or whoever is listening to, whoever is reading the book, whoever is gaining understanding from the book. If you want wisdom and you want to understand the mind of God, that's the book to go to. I mean, the whole book of the old Bible is, is the mind of God, it's the plan of God. But this is wisdom literature, and it shows us the mind of God. It's telling us how to behave. Uh, we're to hear the instruction of our Father. And that doesn't matter whether it's a Father in the church, Father in natural, or our Heavenly Father. He gives us instruction, amen? And we must uh, adhere to it. We must learn from it. Uh, because when He tells us, don't do something because this is what's going to happen, that's exactly what we should do. We should stay away from whatever it is he's warning us about. And so that phrase, my son, is through many times throughout the, the book. I didn't go and count them all, but it, it's a lot of times if you read through that book, uh, you'll find that phrase is in there. Uh, and so that's instruction for young people coming up under the law at that time. But that instruction is good for us even today. God is trying to speak to us. God is trying to tell us how we should be. And so Paul is uh, speaking to Timothy here uh, in our scripture. And he says, since Timothy is a young man, Paul has to warn him about some things that are going to come. Paul, remember now, Paul's got some experience. Uh, Paul was uh, one of those that was in re religious charge before he was saved. He said, let no man despise thy use. In other words, don't let somebody look down on you because you're young, because you're, I put you in charge of something here, and people that are older than you may have a tendency to look down on you. Uh, he was God's chosen person, amen? And as such, must be respected. And so even though he was a young man, he was a gifted person, and he certainly... Uh, was, was gifted in the, in the scriptures. And so he says, let no man despise thy youth. And he says, and I think this is descriptive of how to, how to fix that situation. He says, <clears throat> but he says, but be thou an example of the believers. In other words, don't let them despise your youth, but go and be an example to everybody else. Do the things, whatever you're preaching and teaching, do those things, Amen. Uh, don't allow them to despise you. Don't allow them to look down on you because you might make some mistakes along the way. Uh, but he says, but be an example to the believers in word, <clears throat> in the word of God, in the words that he speaks. He says, in conversation or the manner of life that you have, in charity or in love and in spirit, in faith and in purity. All these things he was supposed to do. And if he did these things, that's how he was going to lead and how he was going to command respect from those that he was over. Even though he was young, uh, God was putting him over a group of people. But he says, this is how you fight that. Be an example. Show them by how you do things. Uh, they will respect that, or they should respect that. Uh, and so you have to be an example to the believers. He said, in all of these things, and certainly in, in, in purity, he says, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. You have to give attendance to reading. 
Paul says, until I come back and visit again, he says, give attendance to reading. He says, study the scriptures. Know what you're talking about. When you're speaking about baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, know what you're talking about. Be able to show them in the scriptures uh, what it is and how it came to be. And he says, but the only, only way you can do that is you have to be diligently seek God. You have to read, uh, you have to exhort, and you have to give attention to doctrine. Now today, people don't want to listen to doctrine. They think doctrine is boring, but it's the doctrine of God. It's the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Uh, and Paul warned Timothy in another place. He said that the time will come where they'll not endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. In other words, Timothy, you're going to preach, you're going to teach, you're going to do all of these things. Don't let them despise your youth. Be an example to them. Study. Be able to exhort people. Be able to teach people. Uh, be able to show them the doctrine of God. Uh, but he says there's going to come a time when people are not going to want to hear the doctrine anymore. We're even in that day today. People don't want to hear doctrine anymore. They want to uh, go to see a show somewhere. I was surprised. I, I see all the time I get, uh, get stuff through email or whatever about what you can do uh, for the church. The light shows that you can have. That shows a picture of a giant keyboard, a giant soundboard or whatever you call them. And it's got like 6,000 buttons on it. And that's to put on a light show and all those things. If you have to put on a light show to get people saved, then you're in the wrong spot. Amen? There's only one thing that will save people, and that's Jesus Christ, baptism in His name, and the infilling of the gift of the Holy Ghost. All these other things are nice, uh, but the thing is, is what saves people is actually the preaching of the Word of God, the doctrine that Jesus Christ ta teaches. And Paul is warning Timothy here. He's saying, go ahead. He says, Pay attention to these things. Read, exhort, uh, encourage the people strongly. And he says, give attendance to the doctrine. Uh, because in doing those things, uh, he says that not only will you save yourself, you're going to save others that hear you. And he says, and neglect not the gift that is in thee. Whatever Paul is talking about, whether it's the ministry gift or whether it's the gift of the Holy Ghost, uh, he said, don't neglect it, you know. Uh, the Bible tells us to quench not the Spirit. Let the Spirit have free reign. Uh, let be able to do those things. So uh, he says, which is given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. He says, don't neglect. We can't neglect the gifts that God gives us. Amen? Whether we're young or whether we're old, Timothy, now he's talking to a person that uh, certainly is a, as a, at a younger age, but that doesn't mean that he's not able to do what Paul has asked him to do. God has called him, God has prepared him, and now God has sent him to this church, and Paul is trying to encourage him. And in that our devotional reading, it says, of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but by the subverting of the hearts. This is one of those things that Paul has encouraged him to do, uh, not only here, but in another, another place, that he says, that there are certain things that can sidetrack you. When we're young in the gospel, there are certain things that can turn our thoughts aside. We can get in discussions that have no good ending. We can get into, I don't know, I like to call them arguments, but you can get into a disputation over some minor thing that really doesn't have anything to do with salvation. Uh, why, why would you dispute with somebody that, that can't even tell you how to be saved the right way? And so Paul is telling Timothy, he says, put people in remembrance of these things, that they don't strive about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers, meaning subverting to the word of God. And he says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But he said then, but he says, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase into more ungodliness. Uh, again, <clears throat> like I said, uh, just because he was young, Paul was warning him about these things and told, telling him to study 
Not only would he show himself approved unto those that he preached to, but the more important thing was that by his study, he would show himself approved unto God. Amen? And that's the most important thing. Amen? That we study to show ourselves. Uh, we want God's approval, don't we? We want to see Jesus in peace one of these days. We want to hear him say, well done, no good and faithful servant. Uh, so the things that don't lead to that are things that are things that we can waste our time on. You know, I've talked a lot about things that distract us here lately. Uh, all the things that are going on in the world and the diseases, or disease, uh, I should say, <laughs> is the main thing on everybody's mind. <clears throat> but uh, there are things that can distract us from the things that are really important to us. And he's telling Timothy here, uh, they weren't fighting any coronavirus or anything like that, but they were they were fighting false doctrine and idol worship. And so he's telling Timothy, don't get tangled up in in all these vain babblings and, and, and things that won't bring any fruit to the church of God. <clears throat> but he says, just study to show yourself approved unto God and allow these other things to take care of themselves. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't uh, talk to somebody and try to reason with somebody. That's what Paul did. And it says that he reasoned with them out of the scriptures uh, to try and convert their souls so that they would be baptized and be saved and, and uh, would join the church of God. And so, but Paul is telling Timothy here, don't allow these things to distract you from what the most important thing is. And he says, but shame, pro, shame profane and vain babblings for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And then he goes ahead and gives them an example of Hymenaeus and Philetus too that uh, concerning the truth had gone reprobate. In other words, they turned their back. But he said, don't worry about those vain things, the things that won't bring any fruit, the things that won't bring any uh, reconciliation, the things that won't bring any uh, people into the church of God. And so he says, leave those things alone. So we see that age doesn't matter, even though Paul is warning Timothy, because we know that, that normally with age comes wisdom, with age comes experience, with age comes things that we should be getting better and better at in the church of God. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way, but Paul is trying to give Timothy a good start here by telling him, you know, there's certain things that you just have to stay away from, th certain things. Uh, he told him in another place, he says, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. In other words, he's telling Timothy, don't get caught up in the things that are going on all around you. But he says, worry about these things, the doctrine of God, your preaching, your teaching, your manner of life, your conversation, all of these things are the important things in your life. And he says, don't get distracted by the other things and don't get involved in a lot of useless talking back and forth about things, amen? Uh, we, we see a lot of that on, on Facebook and stuff, just a lot of back and forth that doesn't mean anything and it's not going anywhere. All it does is create enemies. <laughs> and so, you know, it's like I think I said last week, I said somebody said to me, they said, well, are you okay? I haven't seen you on Facebook for a while. And I said, uh, it's not that I don't have anything to say, it's just that I'm not saying it. So keep it to myself most of the time. Uh, but that's what Paul's telling Timothy. Pay attention to the things that are important. Pay attention to the doctrine. Pay attention to exhortation. Pay attention to the preaching of the word and the study of the word. All of these things. And he said, and be an example. If you don't want them to despise your youth, because let's face it, if, if, uh, if God was to put in a large church, uh, a person that's a pastor, uh, that's maybe 20 years old, the older saints in that church might be going, what? You know, they might think, I've been around 86 years, you know, and now he's going to tell me how to live and what to do. But for Timothy, he was one of those that Paul was saying, be an example. If you don't want them to despise your youth, if you don't want them to look down on you, then show them by example, by the way you act, the way you teach, what you say, and how you live, and how you show your love, the love of God, uh, and how the Spirit has free reign in your life, 
and, and that you uh, have a faith, and he says an impurity. In other words, he keeps himself holy at all times. So he says, if you don't want to be despised, he said, do these things, and the rest of these things will follow along. And stay away from all the things that don't bring any resolution, doesn't bring any fruit to the church of God or any of those things. So uh, as we see, age doesn't matter. We see, even in Israel's history, we see that there were young kings. You know, it was Josiah, was it Josiah that was put in at about eight years old? Uh, and for a period of time, he just more or less treaded water. But then when the word of God came to him, he started to make some changes. He started to tear down the idols. He started to tear down the groves. He started to do the things that, that God's word had commanded him to do. It wasn't either that he didn't want to, it's because he didn't know about it. But once he knew, then he started to make changes. And of course, you know, some probably at that time didn't like it, you know. People that worship idols, all of a sudden the soldiers are coming, they're tearing down their idols, they're tearing down their groves, they're tearing down their churches, uh, and, and just saying we ought to worship the one true God. All of a sudden now that Josiah is becoming older and more, and more experienced, and understanding what it is that he's supposed to do. So we thank God for the young people. Age doesn't matter. God is able to save whether a person is young. He's able to save whether a person is old. And he certainly will uh, do that. We've seen, we have examples here in our own church. That's some Sister Joyce, I don't know how long she's been saved. Almost as many years as I've been alive, I think. But, uh, that, uh, but it's a tribute to the fact that you can be saved at a young age. God can keep you down through the years. Amen? So we should draw comfort from that and draw uh, uh, encouragement from that because we can see that it can be done. So nothing that, that when we know some of the things that people have had to go through, but yet God has delivered them and God has brought them through on the other side uh, and people are still saved. Uh, it should be an encouragement to us, amen? So age doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you're young, you can be an example. You're old, you need to be an example. But anywhere in between, God is able to save somebody and God is able to keep somebody, amen?